we've been doing a little bit on friction-based machines because friction-based machines are awesome machines in their own right. This is a planetary gearbox with ping-pong balls acting on a plate as a friction machine and a planetary gearbox. And to be honest, they're pretty awesome machines in their own right. Now, it's quite often thought that friction-based machines have a serious problem. Actually, it's not a problem, it's a feature of the machine, and that is, it will slip. If you apply too much torque and you have too much resistance, the whole machine will just slip and not turn. That is brilliant. It's really useful to be able to do that. I mean, why do you think your hand drill has that setting for it to do exactly that? Being able to do that is a feature not a problem of friction-based machines and if used properly can be really really useful and if used improperly then it's a problem. So a problem is a feature used improperly. So friction-based machines with this ability to slip when under high load find a lot of uses. Now we've been using ping pong balls here. The ping pong balls perhaps aren't the best, but they're certainly easy, cheap and illustrate all the principles we want to talk about. And so they make very nice model machines where you can see the principles. Now this is very close to a CVT. And of course a CVT based on friction is one of the great ways of creating a CVT. Using balls, of course, like this, then you're very close to what's called the New Vinci machine. The New Vinci CVT works on the idea that the balls have a different radius depending where you are on the ball. It's perhaps easier to see that on something like a globe. If I'm here at the UK and I want to go around the globe, I have this distance to travel. However, if I happen to be somewhere on the equator, like Colombia for instance, then I have this much to travel and clearly it's a greater distance. It's why when aeroplanes fly, they don't fly this way, they actually fly that way because the distance is shorter. It's called the Great Circle. And that's because gear ratios are not the ratio of the number of teeth. They're the ratio of the pitch circle around the gear. The number of teeth is kind of a shorthand because the number of teeth is the thing based on the modulus, which is the relationship of the pitch circle to the size of the tooth. So it's actually the distance around the circle is what a gear ratio is. Teeth is a shorthand way of getting to that. So if we have two circles touching, then they will have a gear ratio based on the size of those two circles. So clearly, if we move up a globe, we're going to change that relationship because one circle gets smaller and smaller, and that's exactly what the new Vinci does. So to use our ping pong ball as a gear in inverted commas, what we need to do is exactly what they've done here with the globe, and that is put an axle through it. So we have this axis right there, and we need to construct an axis on our ping pong ball so that we can turn it on that axis. Now to do that, I've created this little jig. The ball goes in the little jig, and we do have two axle points that go there. Now, of course, all of these files will be on Thingiverse, including the jig, so should anybody want to make a ping pong ball CVT? Now, the ping pong balls need these axles on them. The first one doesn't really matter. Just glue it on somewhere. The next one needs to be in line, and for it to be in line, there's this jig. The axle you've glued on the ping pong ball fit into one side of the jig, and then we can put a spot of glue on the other one and fit it into the other side, and that'll make sure it runs from center to center, and in line, and we need to do that with all three. Once we've done that, that's what we get. Now we're going to need this plate. This plate has these three holes in to take the ping pong balls, and they have a slight bevel on them to hold the ping pong balls in place. To put them in, they're just a press fit. You give them a good hard press, and they'll pop into, there we go, they'll pop into that space where they're free to turn in any direction. We put all three of those in there. Now, the new Vinci suggests somewhere between 3 and 12. We're using 3 because 3 is just fine. That plate forms the heart of the new Vinci. Of course, we've got to put the other structures around them, and to help us do that, there are three of these pegs, and the pegs, doesn't matter which side, just press into the plate to create the holder for the actual um, spheres themselves. Now, of course, they need to rub on something because it's a friction drive. And because this drive is also um, 
a CVT. We need an input and an output, so we need two disks. One is the input to rub somewhere when we move this, and the other is the output where we'll get the gear change. And to do that, we've got these two wheels. These two wheels just take an O-ring. So that O-ring goes over there, and the O-rings I think are 42 millimeters by 1.5 millimeters. Once we're on there, we have our friction surface. The PLA will slip too much on the ping pong ball, so adding the rubber gives it a friction surface where we can get our model to actually work. We make two of those, and there are two axles. The small one goes about halfway down. The one with the large hole has another axle which has a hole through it and that goes flush with that side so they can ride one over each other like that and of course they can separate which means that we feed them there we go into that plate like that so we have essentially what we need to create new Vinci we give one input which will turn these spheres. It will rub on the output disk which will give us an output. And that ratio will change as we move that in that direction, changing the distance that it travels around the actual sphere. In order to support this structure and constrain it, we need these two support discs. Now, one has a slight ledge on it and the other doesn't. It doesn't matter which way around it goes. But once you put those bits in place, Try and line the rods on the ping pong balls a little bit and the support disc slides into place with the ping pong ball arm going through a slot and these being pushed onto there. So when it's like this, of course, it's still all a bit wobbly. We want some control over this and that's what this plate is for. It goes on the side with the raised portion and it slides on there like that with the axles poking through these curved slots. Well, that means is if I turn that disc, what you'll see is that these axles are able to move up and down in that slot, changing the direction of rotation of the sphere. Now, I haven't put anything on this to move it because there's loads of ways you can do it. I mean, one might be a worm gear. I might put a big ring gear around there and have a worm. Another way might be just a lever. Put a lever on it so you can twist it backwards and forwards. But twisting that disc moves the axles and changes the orientation of the sphere or the ping pong ball in relation to the rubber discs that we put inside. Okay, so we're actually nearly finished. We're just missing a couple of things. The first thing is when we need to apply a normal force in that direction to give a little bit of press of the friction plates and keep them engaged and take up any wear and tear. And for that, we have this spring. This spring is 30 millimeters by, uh, yes, 20 millimeters by 1.2 wire thickness, and it's not very strong, but we don't need a lot of compression, and that goes on there like that. Now, of course, we need to push it down, which is the job of this part here, which goes on there. If we were to leave it like that, it wouldn't be free to spin, so we do need a thrust bearing, and this is the thrust bearing right here. This one is 25 inside diameter, 47 outside diameter, 11 millimeters thick. I bought it from Amazon, it seems a pretty standard bearing, but if you can't get hold of it, then you can quite easily just change the holes, the indentations here and here, to fit whatever thrust bearing you want. The thrust bearing itself drops in this cap. Now the cap is slightly larger than this section here, but will allow that section to fit so we slot the whole thing in place and push it down. And when we push it down, it will also act as a lock plate for this. But it's like that. Now, having a spring on that side pushes against the spheres, and of course that pushes them into this ring here, which causes them to bind. So we clearly need a force on that side, which is about equal to this one. So it holds these in the center and allows it to spin nice and freely while keeping pressure between the input and the output and the little balls that we put in there as our CVT mechanism. So to do that, we've got these bits. We've got another one of these carriers, which takes another thrust bearing, which is the same as the other thrust bearing, and that slots in there like that. This goes on the top like that, and that whole thing is going to slide over here with the spring put on first there. Then you'll notice these three holes. 
These three holes take those pegs there like that. So those pegs go in and those pegs have a nut on them and the nut can move up and down. So this slides on the, the pegs when they're in and the nut is used to adjust the tension on that spring. So I've put a little dot on the output and a dot on the input and to be honest it doesn't matter which one's the output and the input and we get the tension right then we turn the input and of course that turns the output. Right, I've got it at one extreme. I'll give the input one full turn and we'll see how much the output turns by. And roughly one full turn. So at one range we've got a one to one ratio. Now let's put it at the other extreme and give it one full turn. And then we've got about a third of a turn. So it goes from one to one to three to one. You've got to admit, that's pretty cool, eh? So a friction-based CVT using spheres is what the new Vinci CVT is all about. And this CVT does uh, one to one to three to one. So of course you would attach it to a, another set of gears, maybe a planetary gear or something like that, because remember, gears are multiplicative, not additive. And so we can get a much bigger range than we wanted to from a device like this. But Making something out of plastic and ping pong balls that does that, I think is pretty cool. Now it's obviously just to show the principles of stuff. I mean, it would be better, as I said, if maybe you used rubber balls instead of ping pong balls. I will, of course, put all of these files up on Thingiverse should anybody want to play with this. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.